What's going on YouTube bros? It's Devin here from Beast Bodybuilding doing a Q&A over my bench slash chest training from uh, this week. Got a lot of great questions on there, so I'm gonna go over as many as the good ones as I uh, see. So uh, here we go. All right, first question on here is what's your goal weight for the comp this summer? Um, if you're meaning by the summer as in the muscle mayhem, the one that uh, me, Lovato, uh, Matt Ogus and like a whole bunch of other people are doing. I'm not really sure to be honest right now, um, but I'm guessing I'll probably be around 165, maybe a tad lower than that. Um, I don't think I've really put on any muscle mass at all since my last bodybuilding show because I only was going over my caloric intake for roughly two months preparing for that powerlifting competition in December. So I really don't consider that a real bulk. I probably just um, gained back what I, uh, what I lost on that diet for the bodybuilding competitions back in 2011. So that's probably going to be around where I'll be at uh, come July, probably 165-ish, really dialed in though, um, since there'll be a lot of time to prep for that. I'll cut down to 165 and then I'll stay around there probably for like uh, two or three weeks and then I'll um, try to fill out at 165 as much as I can. So hopefully that'll answer that question for you. All right. Next good question I see here. What are your goal numbers for the powerlifting meet in six weeks? Um, I've mentioned this before in my, one of my recent vlogs. I would be happy to hit anything over my uh, recent powerlifting competition at 165, which was back in October. And I believe I totaled 1,104 pounds. So if I could hit 1,110 uh, pounds, I would be happy with that. To me, that's making progression, and that's all I care about. Um, and I'll be doing it 100% raw, no belt, no knee sleeve, so it makes it that much more impressive. So that's the goal for that. Um, currently, I'm holding my strength really well. I'm only 7.6 pounds over my comp weight at 165. So if I can continue to maintain as much strength as I can while cutting down to 165, I'll for sure beat that total record at 165 back that I did in October. Um, Let's see. All right. Um, this guy's asking pretty much uh, if I do any uh, serious ab work because I don't really put out that much ab training videos. I believe I've only done like one or two out of all my videos because A, um, they're boring to me. And B, uh, abs is mostly genetics and body fat percentage. But um, yeah, I do do core work. Um, but most of my core work does come now from training without a belt. Um, but I do hit uh, some light ab training after my back days and my uh, squat days, leg days. Um, usually after a uh, full back or leg day, I'll hit like a few sets of leg raises or um, upside down sit-ups or trunk twists. It depends. I really don't. I really don't train it that hardcore. Not that much volume either. Probably only about uh, top six sets. Uh, for you know the whole workout for my abs like I said you know um, if you really want to see your abs get your body fat low and to change the shape of your abs is almost literally impossible um, I believe Jeff Alberts is a good example he if you look at his abs like one of his abs is completely like off track of his body it looks like it's almost like someone ripped his ab off his abdominal wall and pulled it sideways but that's just his genetics so uh, that's about it guys that's all I got to say about abs uh, nothing really special um, you train them but um, it don't matter how much you train them and it's all about that body fat percentage in the end you want to see them ripped um, what are some weak areas in your physique is slash R um, personally I need to bring up everything in my opinion um, being five foot ten and a half barefoot uh, I really need to fill up my frame as much as I can so I think I need to bring up everything but as uh, my proportions go my proportions are pretty much as good as it's gonna get uh, my calves match my arms um, I have a very tiny waist broad shoulders um, I got a wide back uh, I got good good sweeps in my legs and um, you know, good chest genetics, good bicep peaks, good triceps. So I really don't need to bring up one specific thing. If anything, out of all those, I would say my hamstrings. Um, but 
to be honest, as a natural bodybuilder, um, you're not really gonna see guys with huge hamstrings. Um, the main thing is for your hamstrings, uh, for bodybuilding, is coming in conditioned and a being able to see like the guitar strings uh, behind the leg when you hit like your du double back bicep and your rear lat spread, that's the main thing. But um, besides that, um, your hamstring generally is only uh, a third the size of your quad naturally without training. So. Um, hamstrings aren't really going to grow that much, to be honest. You're never going to see a natural bodybuilder with a huge sweep underneath their um, quad like the pros because, I mean, it's it's genetics. I mean, everyone has this problem. Um, but, yeah, I'd probably bring up my hamstrings a little bit more. Um, but besides that, I'm going to try to hit everything as hard as I can for when, the next time I bulk, and I'm going to be bulking for a long time, um, which will probably be close to the end of 2013. And uh, like I said, I'll just hit hit everything as hard as I can. Try to bring up my physique pretty much bigger for two, next time I cut down. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, why do I do only pause bench pressing? Well, right now I'm getting ready for uh, powerlifting meet as well as bodybuilding competition. And to me personally, there really is no difference between pausing the bench, pausing each rep, than uh, just doing touch and go. I've never had a different feeling in my chest. Um, but then again, I don't do that for everything. I only do that for bench pressing, uh, deadlifts. Uh, I do pause reps for both of those. Um, and uh, that's just the way I do it. Um, getting ready for a powerlifting competition, the only way you're really gonna know what you're able to hit is if you pause each rep. And um, to, be, to be honest, doing touch and go reps, like I said, really doesn't do anything different to me. Um, I just you know my preference um, so if you guys are wondering you know to me it really don't matter you're still gonna get the same results doing a pause bench or you know a touch and go bench um, and that's pretty much all I got to say about that question uh, someone's asking me if I cut my hair uh, I'm going to cut my hair by the way for this bodybuilding competition the main reason why when you have a big set of hair in your head, it makes your body look smaller and you don't want that illusion. You want the opposite illusion. That's why you see most of these guys in bodybuilding, they're like shaved bald. Um, it's gonna make you look the biggest, but I don't like the bald look. So I'll probably just cut it shorter than it is now. Um, but uh, definitely cutting it soon, probably within the next week or two. Do you feel like you have all the tools to get a full workout at your house? Or when you train at home, do you go to the gym later that same day? Um, no, I don't. Um, to the last part of that question, I don't. I, I never train at home to go to the gym. I've tried that a few times. Didn't really like it. A, it's kind of a waste of time. And B, I kind of like just getting my workout done in one shot. But um, for my chest, yes, I definitely have enough tools at my house to get a good chest workout. My bench goes decline, incline. Um, I have a, a dip machine outside to do dips. I got all kinds of bars at my house to do, uh, you know, skull crushers, easy bar, straight bar. So that's pretty much all you need. I, I even got uh, dumbbells I can make at home, even though it's a pain in the ass. But but days like back day, leg day, um, those I like doing at the gym a lot more because, I mean, there's not really much you can do for back and legs at home. Uh, besides a power clean to front squat or a power clean and clean jerk over your head to do a back squat and uh, you know rows and deadlifts are good for your back but I do like doing uh, machine work at the gym and um, you know hitting cables as well for finishers but um, yeah the best workout I get at my house definitely is chest by far it's the closest to the gym the only difference um, is I don't have cables to do cable flies but to me, those really don't do a you know, big difference besides just pumping up your chest, really. Um, to get those striations and lines in your chest is all body fat. Doing cable flies is really not gonna make that much of a difference. Um, uh, let's see. Hmm. You think you could be stronger if you weren't as lean as you are. Of course. Um, right now, my body fat's definitely pretty low and getting lower day by day. Um, I think my best strength is when I'm around probably 15% body fat. Um, that's when I'm usually probably uh, going to be my strongest. Back in high school, when I trained pure powerlifting, I was probably around 15% body fat, maybe higher. 
a little bit higher, not much higher, probably 15, 18% body fat. And I was comp benching 355 at 18, at 208 pounds, and my clean jerk was 315 at 208. So definitely those are my best numbers for bench and clean jerk. Didn't really train squat and then uh, deadlift that much back then because I didn't do full powerlifting. Uh, the Florida High School Weightlifting uh, Federation only does bench press and clean and jerk so those are the numbers that I uh, only cared about back then but um, yeah I would say probably 15% body fat I'll be at my strongest um, another person asking me if I'm getting down to 165 yep I'm cutting down to 165 for this powerlifting meet what am I gonna chain when J with Jason uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. I don't know. This guy lives close to me and uh, he answers one of my messages. I mean, I'll go train with this guy if you guys really want. Um, I've seen his videos. He's hella funny and I think it'd be uh, pretty uh, cool to train with him for a day and as well as um, Elliot. Uh, I got to find out where he's working out and uh, go hit up a workout with him as well since he lives in my area, in the Tampa Bay area. Um, Someone's asking me uh, to give us my bench slash chest routine with rep sets and everything. I pretty much post that every single workout that I do for my chest. I show you guys exactly what I'm doing um, for the reason uh, behind it as well. Like I said, I'm getting ready for a power of the competition, so I'm doing the lower reps because I'm training for power. And um, uh, that's pretty much it. I tell you guys my sets on the on these on those training days and everything. So I don't know why this guy asked a question like that, but hopefully that helped. Um, sometimes I'll actually post my full workout in the description box. Just check out for that. Um, every once in a while I'll do that. Um, someone's asking me what's my deficit right now. Um, to be honest, I really don't know. I was eating around 2,800 calories a day to maintain 180. And now I'm eating roughly just over 2,000-ish with the current macros that I have. So um, I'm guessing that's like a 700 calorie deficit plus the cardio I'm doing. And my metabolism is probably speeding up as well. But um, yeah, I would probably say 700 calories is my deficit. Um, at 180, I don't know what it is now. Uh, that's something that changes as you lose body weight. Um, how can you train for a bodybuilding contest and a powerlifting meet at the same time? Well, to me, powerlifting and bodybuilding go hand in hand for natural bodybuilders. Um, to me, hitting your compound movements really super heavy, even if it's low reps, helps build muscle mass. Um, I mean, would it make a difference if I you know, up the reps a little bit more and did more hypertrophy work? Maybe. Am I really worried about it too much? Not really, because I'm doing this bodybuilding competition for fun. But in the end, if I'm under my caloric intake for the day, I'm losing weight, I'm getting leaner, that's what you want for bodybuilding. You want to come in shredded and low body fat. Um, the whole strength thing is for my powerlifting me at 165. So I'm going to be coming in this bodybuilding competition strong and lean. And for my powerlifting me, I'm going to be even leaner and even stronger, pound for pound. So hopefully that answers that. But um, probably next year when I'm, uh, you know, getting uh, ready for powerlifting meets, I'll probably mostly train for powerlifting when I'm bulking, and then whenever I'm done, you know, with my powerlifting, I'll probably train hypertrophy for a few months, or you know, go higher reps on my compound movements, but not much. Maybe a few more reps. Like I'll do sets with probably six to eight for bench, squat, deadlift, and pressing movements. Um, you know, versus now I'm lowering my reps, you know, uh, each week, uh, peaking at this powerlifting competition. But, uh, yeah, powerlifting and bodybuilding go hand in hand for naturals guys. So, uh, do your compound movements and kill them heavy. Did you lose much strength when you stopped using leg drive on the bench? Um, at first I felt like I did. Um, but after that first workout, I felt like, uh, I don't know, it just felt really natural to me. Um, it seemed like actually I got stronger after the first workout because I wasn't used to using no leg drive. So um, it's all about tweaking your form. Um, you know, to me, using no leg drive, honestly, it's probably gonna be around the same uh, to where, you know, I was doing using a leg drive and a bigger arch. So uh, 
I guess that just means my chest is stronger now and my leverages are, um, even though they're worse for bench pressing, uh, they still feel the same. But I guess I can't really say that 100% because I haven't gone up to the really heavy weights in the past few weeks. So I guess I'll find that out as I, as I continue cutting. But um, like I said, the goal for when I cut down the 165 is to hit um, something over 281 Paul's bench press. So if I hit 285 with no leg drive, then yippee ki -yay. If I don't, then I'll probably switch back to uh, using my arch form and more leg drive because um, that's better leverage and technique for having a bigger bench press. But um, as of right now, I feel good with using a flat back and no leg drive. So that's pretty much it, guys. That was all the, um, the good questions I saw in this video. I hope you appreciate this kind of video. Uh, I'm gonna start making more of these, probably you know one or two. Um, every few weeks, I'll make a full, you know, answering all your guys' questions from a previous video. And I'll continue making my, my uh, regular Q&A videos where I just do one question, uh, really go into detail on that question. So that's about it, guys. I'm going to go kill this leg day. Um, almost three weeks out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. As always, I'll catch you later. Beast out. Deuces.